going on because we're all at the top. For seven years in a, world, uh, in a row, the chief executive magazine ranked California 51. <laughs> Why? Because Washington, D.C. is even better than California. So we have companies leaving the Texas, companies leaving other places to do business. You know, I was just talking to one company, and he was telling me how because of the regulations, his, he's not going to close down his, his plant. What he's going to do is he's going to expand it in Mexico and Texas. He's hiring another 200 workers in Texas and 100 workers in Mexico instead of here. You know, because California chases them out. Tax Freedom Day, April 16th. That's the day where you had a chance to earn, keep the, all the money you uh, started earning from that day forward. August 27th is the day that you're free to keep your own money after all the regulations. So we need to uh, stop these uh, taxes. And let me just quickly, i got to move past here. Those who make $500,000 a year pay $256 billion in taxes. If they pay 100% of their income, 100% of their income, the government gets $1 trillion. Mm -hmm. But the 2011 annual deficit is $1.6 trillion. Even if you tax every wealthy person in America, you'd still be $600 billion short with this massive deficit. And if you take that money away from these business owners, from these entrepreneurs, from these investors, the free enterprise engine is destroyed. So there's a few solutions, we won't go into them, uh, in cutting tax rates, giving incentive for trillions of dollars of money to come back to the US. We've got to reform our tax code. And then we gotta stop uh, uh, the stop, uh, stopping out of control regulatory agencies. You know, right now, there are agencies that are killing business. I see it all the time with my business. These agencies are killing business. And we've got to be able to stop these out of control lawyers who have unlimited funds and unlimited time that go after businesses and make arbitrary decisions. You heard about Boeing. It was too expensive to have a plant and expand in Seattle. So they were going to uh, South uh, Carolina. This is America, right? And the labor board said, no, you got to do it in Seattle. You've got the FTC telling companies they can't have people like Tony the Tiger. You got the Federal Communication Commission saying, hey, you know, we got to put a, a stop on this talk radio and this Christian radio because, uh, you know, it, it's not fair to everybody else. You've got all these different government agencies coming after companies. And it's more at an historic rate now than I've ever seen it ever in the uh, last 40 years. And we got a, 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 on the un, unfair government employee pensions. There's a small group of people who took advantage of the system. Most teachers, mm -hmm. most government employees, most police and, 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 and firemen, and all the rest aren't included in this. But there are a small group that is sending the nation into bankruptcy if we don't make changes. That's why uh, in New Jersey, the Democrats and Republicans just got together to, to solve part of the solution. And government salaries right now are higher than the private sector. Did you know that city managers in this area are making between $193,000 to $438,000. Yes. Do you know what your city manager is doing? Yes. Yeah. Well, go ask him out on the golf course. <laughs> 65 LA County officials rank in $300,000 or more. This is more than we pay the governor of $173,000. So, you know, you're, you're probably talking about two times the amount is paid to a government employee, a government servant, than to the private sector. 
and the studies are looking for apples and apples and jobs, you're better off becoming a government employee. That shouldn't be the way it is. They should be a public uh, servant. They should be paid well. They should have good pensions. But there shouldn't be an abuse of the system like this. And you know what? The parents used to raise their kids, hey, you need to be a doctor. Right? Yeah. No, today it's, hey, you need to be a government employee. <laughs> and you're probably pretty as familiar with the city of El Segundo. You know, uh, lease chief. 425,000 if you count in the overtime, the lead play, and you know, I'll send you this chart, but you probably all have seen it too many times. We need to repeal Obamacare because it's becoming a health care nightmare. A health care nightmare. You know, the bureaucrats and the boards are going to decide your health care. You got $500 billion sucked out of Medicare. You're going to have 13 people making decisions in that area. Doctors are leaving Medicare because they're seeing what's happening. Doctors are leaving the system because they are seeing what's happening. European-Canadian model, it's killing the, our innovation. And it's slashing our freedom. I do believe it's unconstitutional, and I think the courts are going to find that it's unconstitutional because it requires something that you don't require in America, and you buy something private. You don't do that in America. And that's why the courts are saying, hey, this is unconstitutional. And what, one of the problems with it is what happens. This is the Secretary of Health. Hmm. 1,968 mandates where this person is going to rule over your dental hygiene as to what she, uh, she can do and how long she can do it. You know, no one government agency can ever manage that. That's what's so great about it. You know, going down to the state, down to the county, down to the local, down to the private. Because people can respond to needs. You can't respond with a bureaucracy like this. This is not what you find in, under the U.S. Constitution. This is the most massive centralization of power. Reducing the power of the individual at the expense, at their expense, that I've ever seen. So the result of this, if we do this, is we'll have more freedom and more growth. We can have an economic growth rate of 5 to 8 percent if we do those seven steps I talked about. That's going to accelerate jobs. That's going to accelerate us getting out of this deficit. It's going to be able to get our economy moving again. You know, when I had just gotten out of college, Jimmy Carter. <coughs> Remember Jimmy Carter? <laughs> Did you know that the inflation rate and under Jimmy Carter had grown to 13.9%? But Ronald Reagan did some of the things, just a few of the things I talked about, and it brought it down to 4%. There was an unemployment rate under Jimmy Carter of 17%. But under Ronald Reagan, with cutting the taxes and cutting the regulations, 5% had dropped to We can turn this economy around, ladies and gentlemen. It, it can happen within a couple of years if we stop this mindset that government is salvation. Because government is what's creating a ruin to America. Housing turnaround. We can get stability and rising prices if we do this. We can get the Federal uh, Reserve under control. We can get new opportunity and new technology and new innovations going again, which is restoring the American dream. That's what America is about, moving ahead. Nobody 25 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago could have imagined that we would have the technology and the benefits we have today. We can't imagine what we're going to have. But it's being hindered, it's being squished because of bad government economic policy. And I won't let it happen. We made the decision that we would make a huge personal sacrifice to run for this office because we want to see change. Now, we don't really have time to talk about the housing crisis, the reckless foreign policy, you know, one of the issues I'm really worried about is the threat to Israel 
in the Obama administration undermining Israel, uh, uh, foreign policy that doesn't make sense, like spending billions and billions of dollars we don't have to go into Libya and not even go to Congress, instead go to the United Nations and to NATO and, and ignore Congress, you know, basically about the whole thing. And then the assault on the individual liberty. Net neutrality. One of the out of control agencies is the Federal Communications Commission. And at Christmas time, they snuck through, despite a judge saying no, and besides Congress saying no, they snuck in net neutrality, which is a way of controlling your access to the internet. That's got to stop. And then there's the whole idea of the internet. Uh, you know, there's the kill switch. You know, they were pushing to have the kill switch with President Obama until Egypt started to crumble and brought. Uh, Murat, Mur 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 <laughs> thank you. <laughs> he hit that switch in Egypt, and they were silent then here in the U.S. But that threat is coming up again. And you've heard about things like the fear enough doctor I mentioned about controlling uh, uh, what you hear on radio and TV. And, and the, the centralization of power. America is built upon the concept that the sanctity of the individual is key. That you are important, not the collective. So the bottom line, with big government, your freedom is gone. You have fewer choices, and they always want more. And what does it mean? It's like this picture here. Here's legislator. Here he's talking and debating about the bill. You can't really see it here. You know what they're doing here? They're playing. Yeah, yeah, they're playing uh, some type of card game. That's what we have with career politicians. I promise you, I won't play political games. I'm not going there to be part of committees. I'm not going there to be part of the same old, same old. I'm going there to shake things up with a whole list of things that I know are wrong and make sure that they're changed. So there's hope. And that hope is in you. It's hope in the, the, the voters in this district. And we need to take control of our economy. So <coughs> we need to stop the insanity of de deficit spending, say no to career politicians, speak out for freedom, strengthen our security and friends overseas, and demand real hope and real change. And that's really what I'm standing on. So I take a look at my opponent, Janice Hahn, and I'll be glad to send you a copy of this. Everything I talked about, she opposes. If she had come, like I invited her here, she and I would have been debating back and forth on every one of those issues we talked about. Because her solution is to spend more, to tax more, to regulate more. And that's what bankrupt the city of Los Angeles. And that's what is bankrupting the United States. So, Boy, I, I went over, but we still have a little time for these questions and answers. Um, let me just wrap it up this way, and then we'll go to the questions and answers. I'd be glad to talk to you, any of you, about any issue and any position that we can't handle it today. By email, and if I can, by phone, it's really hard time-wise in the next two weeks. I would ask for your vote. I would ask that... Uh, you really consider some of you may have never voted for a Republican before. Some of you may normally never vote in a, in a special election. That's the problem with a special election. 18% went to the polls before. 12% went to the polls. We'll go to the poll on July 12th. We're looking at about, oh, 26, 27,000 absentee ballots coming in. As we look at those absentee ballots, we're analyzing who's voting, who's not. And we're seeing a flip-flop of several hundred volts here and 700 volts there. When I ran, I was totally ignored. The media totally ignored me. And they, uh, in fact, had cameras. The media had cameras at, Bowen, at Secretary of State Bowen's office and at Janice Hahn's office. He said, those two Democrats are going to run against each other. The headline on Tuesday night was Bowen and Hahn in runoff. 